Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Darshan Talks. We have a really, really exciting conversation for you. Today, what we're going to talk about is the idea of PRC review or Promotional Regulatory Committee Review, which sometimes is also called the MLR or the LMR board, which is the Legal Medical Regulatory Review. Um, the Kulkarni Law Firm provides services reviewing these types of uh, promotional pieces. So what are some issues that have popped up in 2019 that are different or um, worth mentioning as you go into 2020. This is the Darshan Talks podcast, regulatory guy, irregular podcast with host Darshan Kulkarni. You can find the show on Twitter at Darshan Talks or the show's website at darshantalks.com. The number one issue, lay summaries. If you are engaged in any type of um, clinical research, the EMA has put out certain requirements saying that you need to put out plain language summaries so that patients can understand this information. However, um, that's more for the EMA. The moment you do that in the US, that would be considered potentially promotional. Is that information being, and, and a lot of companies are saying, you know what, what we wanna do is we wanna have a global standard that reviews these pieces. So plain language summaries, are they being reviewed in your company? What rules are they being reviewed as? Um, scientific discussion may not be subject to PRC review. On the other hand, medical stuff doesn't necessarily always go through PRC review. However, if it's patient facing, maybe it does. What are your rules around this information? Number two, uh, patient groups. Everyone's been talking about using patient groups and patient advocacy, and that's great. However, there have been several instances where patient groups are getting prosecuted. Um, it's often because these patient groups land up being for, uh, methods in which co-pays for these companies, uh, co-pays towards these products are being paid for. Uh, co-pays are used as a system uh, by, by the government to ensure that monies are appropriately being used uh, towards the cost of uh, drugs. Um, however, these, um, these patient advocacy groups uh, often come out and pay the copay, and the result of that is uh, allegedly um, that you, that drugs are being inappropriately prescribed. Uh, at least three different companies uh, have agreed to pay a total of $122.6 million to, uh, to resolve claims that they violated the False Claims Act by illegally paying the Medicare or Civilian um, Health and Medical Program uh, copays for their own products. Um, and Jazz and Lundbeck each entered uh, five-year corporate integrity agreements with the OIG as part of their respective settlements. So stay tuned, just because it's a patient group uh, doesn't mean you're home free, you need to make sure it's being reviewed appropriately. Um, then the next question to look at is social media. Um, and when we talk about social media, we're really talking about the Amarin versus, uh, the Amarin case, and essentially what they had was Amarin accused DSM, Pharmavite, and Nordic Naturals of um, importing dietary supplements and making claims. And essentially their argument was that these are new drugs that have not received approval from the FDA. Um, they went to the ITC and they said that uh, you need to uh, launch an investigation uh, because the FDCA, the Food, Drugs and Cosmetics Act, bars private enforcement. Um, the ITC tossed the claim in 2017. The federal circuit held that the ITC can refuse to probe allegations. So um, Amarin's claims are based on alleged violation of the Food, Drugs, and Cosmetics Act, which only the government can enforce, and the appeals court actually agreed with that. The Supreme Court declined to hear uh, to review the lower court's judgment, essentially letting the, the ITC's decision stand, um, and let, letting the appeals court decision stand as well. The next thing to look at is this idea of um, how are you engaging with physicians, whether you're using speakers, uh, spe speakers bureaus or are you using uh, other meth methods in which you are talking to these doctors. Um, what seems to have come under increased scrutiny over time is this idea uh, of paying physicians uh, in different ways um, for and, and essentially providing a kickback. Um, if you were involved in kickbacks um, you were being potentially prosecuted. Ins Insys uh, was one of the companies that <clears throat> um, that got caught doing this and, and has problems. So if you are serving on a PRC or MLR board, stay aware, make sure you're looking into this. And then I would say that the, the fifth piece that came out uh, in 2019 that is interesting is Outcome Health. And uh, what Outcome Health did was they installed screen and screens in doctor's offices and waiting rooms and the idea was that um, they would be able to promote products for companies. Uh, the company gained widespread attention in 2017 when it secured funding and grew to a valuation of about $5.5 billion. 
Uh, however, the allegation was the former executives ran a massive fraud scheme that brought in almost 500 million in financing, a $110 million loan, and a $375 million loan amounting to a total of about a billion dollars. And these were all based on fraudulent claims. Uh, allegedly, Outcome Health uh, employees misled advertisers with uh, inflated data, and the invest investigation uh, kept on, it's still ongoing in many ways. Um, but this was considered to be a billion dollar fraud scheme. Uh, one of the executives, Ashik Desa, who actually is, happens to be a 26 year old, um, was, entered the first guilty plea. Uh, they, the company also falsified financial figures, and, uh, and there, one of the examples they highlighted was where Outcome uh, calculated an ad campaign had generated more than $1.7 million in new revenue, but the data showed that the actual amount that, they, that the company made was only $81,600. So that's hugely problematic. Um, this was another one of these issues where, again, if you're using um, vendors, you need to be able to A, look at their data, make sure that this data is, um, is not being inappropriately put forth, trust the data, how, how do you trust it? Um, and again, this should all be included in your PRC review as you continue. Um, stay tuned, listen in. We should have more information for you. This was just your top five issues that may affect PRC review, that affected PRC review in 2019 and may affect it in 2020. This is the Darshan Talks podcast, regulatory guy, irregular podcast with host Darshan Kulkarni. You can find the show on Twitter at Darshan Talks or the show's website at darshantalks.com.